From the halls of colonial power to the rise of independent Jamaica, Freemasonry has been a constant, if often unseen, presence. This exploration is not about exposing conspiracies or perpetuating myths, it is about shedding light on an organization that has long operated in the shadows. By tracing its origins, its evolution, and its impact, we can begin to understand the true extent of Freemasonry's hidden influence in Jamaica. The story of Freemasonry is a tale spun from ancient threads. Its origins are shrouded in mystery, a blend of history and legend that has captivated and confounded scholars for centuries. Some trace its roots back to the builders of ancient civilizations, the skilled stonemasons who erected towering monuments and intricate cathedrals. Others point to medieval guilds where craftsmen gathered in secret to protect their trade and share their knowledge. Regardless of its precise beginnings, Freemasonry as we know it emerged in the early 18th century. In 1717, the first Grand Lodge was established in London, England, marking a pivotal moment in the organization's history. Freemasonry transitioned from an informal network of guilds to a more structured, fraternal organization. It adopted elaborate rituals, symbolic language, and a hierarchical system of degrees through which members could progress. At its core, Freemasonry promoted ideals of brotherhood, morality, and self-improvement. Its members, bound by oaths of secrecy, met in lodges adorned with symbolic imagery, engaging in rituals meant to impart moral lessons and foster a sense of community. Freemasonry's emphasis on ethical conduct, charity, and intellectual discourse resonated with men from all walks of life, and the organization quickly spread throughout Europe and its colonies. As the British Empire expanded its reach across the globe, so too did Freemasonry. The organization's association with British colonialism is undeniable. Freemasonry often followed the footsteps of explorers, merchants and soldiers, taking root in new lands and shaping the social and political landscapes of colonized territories. Jamaica, a jewel in the crown of the British Empire, was no exception. Freemasonry's arrival on the island's shores marked the beginning of its enduring influence in Jamaican society. The first Masonic lodges in Jamaica were established in the early 18th century, brought to the island by British colonists who sought to recreate familiar social structures and exert their influence in this new land. These early lodges were exclusive gatherings, their membership largely restricted to British officials, wealthy planters and merchants, men who held the reins of power in colonial Jamaica. For these early members, Freemasonry offered more than just camaraderie and ritual. It provided a platform for networking, for solidifying alliances and for navigating the complexities of colonial governance. In the lodges of Kingston and other burgeoning towns, deals were brokered, secrets were shared, and the foundations of power were reinforced. Freemasonry, in its early Jamaican incarnation, was intricately intertwined with the dynamics of colonialism. The year 1739 marked a pivotal moment in the history of Freemasonry in Jamaica. It was in this year that the first Lodge of Jamaica was established in Kingston, the island's bustling capital. This lodge, operating under the auspices of the United Grand Lodge of England, solidified Freemasonry's presence on the island and set the stage for its expansion in the decades that followed. The first Lodge of Jamaica quickly became a hub for the colonial elite. Its membership roster read like a who's who of Jamaican society, comprising British governors, high-ranking military officials, wealthy landowners and influential merchants. Meetings were held in grand houses or purpose-built lodge buildings, often located in the heart of Kingston's commercial district, reflecting the status and influence of its members. The lodge's activities extended beyond ritualistic gatherings. Members engaged in charitable works, supporting local schools and hospitals and reinforcing their image as pillars of the community. However, beneath this veneer of philanthropy lay a more strategic purpose. Freemasonry for the colonial elite was a tool for maintaining their grip on power, for ensuring the smooth operation of the colonial machinery and for perpetuating their dominance in Jamaican society. The year 1739 saw the formal establishment of Freemasonry in Jamaica, with the founding of the first Lodge of Jamaica in Kingston. 
This lodge, operating under the jurisdiction of the United Grand Lodge of England, marked a significant step in the organization's global expansion and its growing influence within the British Empire. The arrival of Freemasonry in Jamaica mirrored a pattern seen across many British colonies, where the organization served as a social and often political tool for the colonial elite. The first lodge of Jamaica was not merely a social club, it was a carefully structured organization with its own rituals, hierarchies and obligations. Meetings were held in secret, often in grand homes or rented spaces with members using coded language and symbols to protect their discussions from outsiders. The Lodge's membership was a reflection of the power structures of colonial Jamaica, with British officials, wealthy planters and prominent merchants forming the core of its ranks. The allure of Freemasonry for these men went beyond the rituals and the camaraderie. Membership in the Lodge provided access to a powerful network of individuals who controlled vast wealth, political influence and social standing. Within the walls of the Lodge, business deals were struck, political strategies were discussed and social connections were forged, all under the veil of secrecy and fraternal brotherhood. As the 18th century progressed, Freemasonry in Jamaica expanded beyond the confines of the First Lodge. New lodges, each with its own character and membership, began to emerge in different parts of the island. One such lodge, established in 1775, was the Albion Lodge. This lodge, named after an archaic term for England, quickly rose to prominence, becoming a powerful force within Jamaican society and a symbol of the intertwining of Freemasonry and colonial power. The Albion Lodge attracted a membership that was drawn from the highest echelons of Jamaican society. British governors, military leaders, wealthy plantation owners and influential merchants all found a place within its ranks. The Lodge's meetings were grand affairs, often held in opulent settings with members adhering to a strict code of conduct and decorum. The Albion Lodge, like other Masonic lodges of the era, played a multifaceted role in colonial Jamaica. On one hand, it served as a social club, fostering bonds of brotherhood and camaraderie among men who shared common interests and backgrounds. On the other hand, it operated as a discrete network, allowing its members to leverage their collective influence to shape political decisions, secure economic advantages and maintain their grip on power within the colony. beyond the square and compass, Freemasonry and colonial society. The influence of Freemasonry in colonial Jamaica extended far beyond the closed doors of its lodges. The organization's principles of morality, charity and self-improvement resonated with many in a society grappling with the complexities of colonialism, slavery and the pursuit of wealth and status. Masonic lodges, often through their charitable activities, became visible symbols of social responsibility and community involvement. Lodges regularly donated funds to support schools, hospitals and orphanages, burnishing their public image and reinforcing their position within the social fabric of the island. The Masonic emphasis on education and self-improvement also found expression in the establishment of schools and libraries, often with the support of lodge members. These institutions, while not explicitly Masonic in their teachings, reflected the organization's commitment to intellectual growth and moral development. However, the intersection of Freemasonry and colonial society was not without its complexities. The exclusivity of lodges, often restricted to men of European descent, reinforced existing social hierarchies and racial divisions. The secrecy surrounding Masonic rituals and activities also fueled suspicion and mistrust among those excluded from its inner circle, leading to accusations of elitism and hidden agendas. Cracks in the colonial facade. The 19th century brought winds of change to Jamaica, shaking the foundations of colonial rule and the established order. The abolition of the slave trade in 1807, followed by the full emancipation of enslaved Africans in 1834, marked a turning point in the island's history. As Jamaica grappled with the social and economic implications of emancipation, Freemasonry too found itself at a crossroads. The organization, deeply intertwined with the colonial power structure, faced a growing tension between its exclusive past and the evolving realities of a society in transition. 
The decades leading up to emancipation saw the emergence of a small but influential class of free people of color in Jamaica. These individuals, often of mixed African and European heritage, challenged the rigid racial hierarchies of colonial society. They established businesses, acquired property, and sought recognition as equal members of the community. Freemasonry, with its ideals of brotherhood and moral uprightness, proved appealing to some within this emerging class. The prospect of joining an organization that transcended racial boundaries, at least in principle, held a certain allure. However, the reality of Freemasonry in Jamaica was far more complex than its lofty ideals. The lodges, steeped in their colonial origins and dominated by the white elite, were slow to embrace change. The admission of non-white members, while not explicitly prohibited by Masonic law, was often met with resistance and prejudice. Emancipation and the quest for equality. The year 1838 marked the official end of the apprenticeship system that followed the abolition of slavery in Jamaica. The formerly enslaved population, now legally free, embarked on a new chapter in their history, one fraught with both opportunities and challenges. Freemasonry, with its emphasis on self-improvement, moral guidance and social advancement, presented itself as a potential avenue for upward mobility and integration into the newly restructured society. For many emancipated Jamaicans, Freemasonry held the promise of belonging to a respected institution, of forging connections with influential individuals, and of gaining access to knowledge and resources that had long been denied to them under slavery. The organization's emphasis on equality and brotherhood, at least within the confines of the Lodge, resonated with their aspirations for a more just and equitable society. However, the path to inclusion within Freemasonry was not without obstacles. The legacy of slavery and the deeply ingrained racial prejudices of the time cast a long shadow. Many lodges, dominated by the white elite, were hesitant to open their doors fully to black members. The fear of upsetting the social order, of diluting the perceived prestige of the organization and of facing backlash from those resistant to change created a climate of reluctance and in some cases outright opposition. Section 3. A Mason for the People, George William Gordon. Amidst the social and political upheavals of 19th century Jamaica, one figure emerged as a symbol of resistance, advocacy and the complexities of navigating identity and belonging within a society still grappling with the legacy of slavery. George William Gordon, born in 1820 to a mixed-race heritage, became a prominent voice for the rights of the disenfranchised, particularly the black population, and his story is intricately intertwined with the evolving role of Freemasonry in Jamaica. Gordon, a successful businessman and landowner, transcended the racial barriers of his time. He used his position and influence to advocate for social reform, land ownership rights for former slaves, and improved living conditions for the poor. His outspoken criticism of the colonial government and his unwavering support for the rights of the oppressed made him both a hero to many and a target of suspicion and hostility from the ruling elite. Gordon's involvement in Freemasonry added another layer of complexity to his story. As a member of the Lodge of St Andrew, one of Jamaica's prominent lodges, he navigated a world that both embraced and contradicted his ideals. Within the Lodge, he found common ground with men from different racial and social backgrounds, united by the principles of brotherhood and mutual support. Section 4. Bridging the Divide Freemasonry in a Transformed Society The latter half of the 19th century witnessed a gradual but significant shift in the social landscape of Jamaica. The demise of the plantation system, coupled with the growing economic and political influence of the black population, forced a re-evaluation of long-held power dynamics. Freemasonry, once a bastion of colonial exclusivity, found itself adapting to a society in flux, grappling with the need to bridge racial divides and redefine its role in a rapidly changing world. The increasing presence of black members within Masonic lodges while initially met with resistance from some quarters, gradually became a reality. The principles of equality and brotherhood espoused within the lodge walls slowly began to seep into the organization's broader identity. Lodges that had once been exclusively white saw the emergence of black leaders, 
challenging preconceived notions and advocating for a more inclusive vision of Freemasonry. This period also witnessed the establishment of new lodges, some specifically formed by and for the black community. These lodges provided a space for men of African descent to gather, to share their experiences and to forge bonds of brotherhood within an organization that had historically excluded them. The emergence of these lodges reflected a growing sense of agency and self-determination among black Jamaicans who were no longer content with being relegated to the margins of society. Section 1. A growing presence, Freemasonry in the late 19th century. The final decades of the 19th century witnessed a period of significant growth and transformation for Freemasonry in Jamaica. As the island navigated the complexities of post-emancipation society, seeking to forge a new identity amidst the remnants of its colonial past, Freemasonry found itself increasingly integrated into the fabric of Jamaican life. Lodges, once largely confined to urban centres like Kingston, began to spring up in smaller towns and rural areas reflecting the organisation's expanding reach and appeal. This period saw a surge in membership, drawing individuals from a wider cross-section of Jamaican society. While the organisation still maintained its hierarchical structure and adherence to ritual, it became more accessible to those who had previously been excluded from its ranks. Black professionals, educators, businessmen and community leaders found a place within Freemasonry, bringing with them new perspectives and aspirations. The growth of Freemasonry in this era can be attributed in part to the organization's ability to adapt to the changing social landscape. Lodges became spaces where men from different backgrounds, united by shared values and a commitment to self-improvement, could come together, fostering a sense of community and purpose in a society still grappling with deep divisions. The emphasis on moral uprightness, ethical conduct and charitable works resonated with many Jamaicans seeking to build a better future. Section 2. Pillars of Influence, Notable Figures and Lodges the expansion of Freemasonry in Jamaica during the late 19th and early 20th centuries coincided with the rise of several notable figures who played pivotal roles in shaping the island's political, social and economic landscape. These men, often holding high positions within Masonic lodges, wielded considerable influence both within and beyond the organisation their lives and actions reflecting the complex interplay between Freemasonry, power and identity in Jamaican society. One such figure was Sir John Pringle, who served as Governor of Jamaica from 1887 to 1892. Pringle, an active and respected Freemason, used his position to strengthen ties between Jamaican lodges and the Grand Lodge of Scotland, further integrating the island's Masonic community into the global network. His governorship, marked by a period of relative stability and progress, saw the establishment of new schools, hospitals and infrastructure projects, some with the support of Masonic lodges, solidifying the organisation's image as a force for good within society. Another prominent lodge that rose to prominence during this era was the Phoenix Lodge No. 914. Established in Kingston in the late 19th century, the Phoenix Lodge attracted a diverse membership, including businessmen, politicians, educators and clergymen, reflecting the growing inclusivity of Freemasonry in Jamaica. The Lodge became known for its charitable works, particularly its support for educational initiatives and its efforts to uplift underprivileged communities. Section 3. A Legacy in Stone and Spirit – Freemasonry's Enduring Impact The legacy of Freemasonry in Jamaica is etched not only in the stone of its Grand Lodges, but also in the very spirit of the island's social and cultural fabric. From its early days as an exclusive fraternity of colonial elites, the organization evolved to embrace a more inclusive membership, reflecting the changing demographics and aspirations of Jamaican society. This transformation, while gradual and not without its challenges, shaped Freemasonry's enduring impact on the island. One of the most visible manifestations of Freemasonry's influence is its architectural footprint. Grand Lodge buildings, often designed in ornate styles that reflected the organization's emphasis on symbolism and grandeur, stand as testaments to its historical presence. 
These buildings, often located in prominent positions within towns and cities, served as constant reminders of Freemasonry's place within the social hierarchy. Beyond its physical presence, Freemasonry left an indelible mark on Jamaican society through its emphasis on education, morality and self-improvement. Many prominent educators, scholars and intellectuals were active Freemasons. Their influence felt in the development of schools, libraries and cultural institutions. The organization's commitment to these values resonated with a society striving for progress and enlightenment. Section 4, A Discreet Hand Freemasonry and the Shaping of Modern Jamaica. As Jamaica moved towards independence in the mid-20th century, Freemasonry continued to operate quietly behind the scenes, its influence often subtle but pervasive. Many of the key figures who shaped the island's political landscape in the decades leading up to and following independence were Freemasons, their allegiances to the organization and its principles shaping their world views and actions. While Freemasonry as an organization maintained its official stance of non-interference in politics, the shared experiences, values and networks fostered within lodges undoubtedly influenced the decisions and relationships of its members. The discreet hand of Freemasonry, while difficult to quantify or prove definitively, likely played a role in shaping policy, forging alliances and navigating the complexities of nation building in a newly independent Jamaica. The influence of Freemasonry extended beyond the realm of politics. In the business world, Masonic connections often facilitated partnerships, investments and the consolidation of our wealth and power. The shared values of trust, integrity and mutual support fostered within lodges sometimes translated into tangible economic advantages for those within the Masonic network. The relationship between Freemasonry and Jamaican politics has always been a subject of speculation and debate. While the organization itself maintains a strict policy of non-political involvement, the individual members of lodges have often held positions of significant influence within the halls of government. This intersection of personal affiliation and political power has, at times, fueled accusations of undue influence and raised questions about the nature of Freemasonry's role in shaping Jamaican society. Throughout Jamaica's history, from the colonial era to the present day, it is undeniable that numerous prominent politicians, government officials and leaders from various sectors have been Freemasons. While their Masonic membership does not inherently imply a direct influence on their political decisions, it is plausible that the shared values, networks and experiences gained within lodges may have subtly shaped their perspectives and interactions. Critics of Freemasonry often point to this concentration of influence as evidence of a hidden agenda, suggesting that lodges serve as breeding grounds for elitism, favoritism and the perpetuation of power structures that benefit a select few. They argue that the secrecy surrounding Masonic rituals and discussions fosters an environment of distrust and raises concerns about the potential for conflicts of interest between a member's Masonic obligations and their public duties. Section 2, Whispers of Influence, Business, Philanthropy and the Masonic Network. Beyond the realm of politics, Freemasonry's influence in Jamaica extends into the spheres of business, philanthropy and social networks. The bonds of brotherhood forged within lodges often translate into tangible benefits for members, fostering a system of mutual support, trust and access to resources that can be leveraged for personal and collective advancement. In the business world, Masonic connections can open doors to partnerships, investments and access to markets that might otherwise be inaccessible. The shared values of integrity, hard work and ethical conduct emphasised within lodges can foster a sense of trust and reliability among members, facilitating business transactions and fostering economic growth within the Masonic network. Freemasonry's commitment to philanthropy and charitable work is another avenue through which the organization has exerted its influence in Jamaica. Lodges have historically played a significant role in supporting hospitals, schools, orphanages and other community initiatives, often providing financial assistance, resources and manpower to uplift the less fortunate. 
This dedication to charitable endeavours has earned Freemasonry a generally positive reputation among many Jamaicans who view the organisation as a force for good within society. The Lodge's contributions to education, healthcare and social welfare have undoubtedly benefited countless individuals and communities across the island. Section 3, a contested legacy, accusations, perceptions, and enduring mysteries. Despite its long history and contributions to Jamaican society, Freemasonry continues to be viewed with a mix of admiration, suspicion, and for some, outright distrust. The organization's secretive nature, its hierarchical structure, and its historical association with power and influence have fueled accusations of elitism, occultism, and even sinister conspiracies. Critics argue that the oaths of secrecy sworn by members, the elaborate rituals conducted behind closed doors, and the organization's reluctance to disclose its inner workings to the public create an environment ripe for speculation and mistrust. They point to historical instances where Freemasons in positions of power have allegedly favored fellow Lodge members, fueling perceptions of corruption and a lack of transparency. Freemasons counter these accusations by emphasizing the organization's core values of brotherhood, charity and self-improvement, arguing that their rituals and symbols are allegorical tools for moral and spiritual growth, not instruments of power or manipulation. They point to their long history of charitable work and community involvement as evidence of their commitment to making a positive impact on society. Section 1. Echoes in the Present Today, the presence of Freemasonry in Jamaica is less overt than in its colonial heyday. The Grand Lodges, once bustling centres of social and political life, now stand as silent sentinels, their weathered facades whispering tales of a bygone era. The organisation, once a dominant force in the island's power structures, has receded into a more discreet role, its influence felt less in the pronouncements of politicians and more in the quiet workings of tradition and social networks. Yet to dismiss Freemasonry as a relic of the past would be a mistake. The organisation, though less visible, continues to operate within Jamaica, its lodges still drawing members from various walks of life. The allure of its rituals, the bonds of brotherhood forged within its walls, and the enduring appeal of its principles continue to resonate with some, particularly among older generations who recall a time when Freemasonry held a more prominent place in Jamaican society. The echoes of Freemasonry's past are still discernible in the fabric of modern Jamaica. The organization's emphasis on education, morality and self-improvement left an indelible mark on the island's social and cultural landscape. Many of the schools, hospitals and charitable institutions that benefited from Masonic support in the past continue to serve communities across Jamaica, serving as tangible reminders of the organization's enduring legacy. Section 2. An Unfinished Story The story of Freemasonry in Jamaica is a complex and multifaceted narrative woven from threads of power, secrecy and the enduring human quest for belonging and meaning. From its arrival on the island's shores alongside British colonialism to its evolution into a more inclusive organisation, Freemasonry has both reflected and shaped the social, political and cultural currents of Jamaican society. As Jamaica continues to navigate the challenges of the 21st century, grappling with issues of inequality, social justice and the search for identity in a globalised world, the role of organisations like Freemasonry remains a subject of ongoing debate. Can an organization shrouded in secrecy and steeped in tradition find relevance in a world that increasingly values transparency and inclusivity? The answer, perhaps, lies in Freemasonry's ability to adapt and evolve. Just as it transitioned from an exclusive fraternity of colonial elites to a more inclusive organization that embraced members from diverse backgrounds, Freemasonry must continue to examine its role in a changing world. The principles of brotherhood, charity and self-improvement, if genuinely embraced and practiced, can still hold relevance in a society grappling with division and uncertainty.